27 and verse 13, Psalm 27 and verse 13, he says, I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in 2024. The Amplified Classic says, what, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see? Somebody say, I would see. Tap someone beside you, please, and say, I will see. I will see. No, no, turn to them, say, you will see, you will see. the Lord's goodness. In the, land in the land of the living. Of the living. He says, what, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Maintain five, maintain to keep possession. What would have come become of me if I do not know how to hold and defend? What would become of me if I relinquish and surrender? What would have become of me if I had not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? I said there are some factors that mitigate against progress in our lives, especially when we have come through some certain periods of consecration. I spoke about temptation, which comes, and the devil wants to use it to derail us, and it comes in the form of the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and what? pride of life. I spoke about trials. Trials come to really derail you, but trials produce three things on the inside of you. And the three things it produces is what? It makes you a solution provider. It makes you, another second S, it makes you stronger. And the third S, it gives you success and achievement. Then I said another thing that mitigates against progress and that the devil throws in our ways is what I call the third T, is what I call time. And I did say that sometimes there's something called a divine delay. And a divine delay makes us understand three things. Number one, it makes us understand that the waiting time is a testing time and not a wasted time. Number two, it makes us to understand God's calendar. Number three, it makes us understand steps but not strides. Little steps, steps by steps. Last week, I spoke about the, third, the fourth thing that comes against us, which is called the tongue. And I said, the tongue, you, by your tongue, you're supposed to do two things. Number one, what? Set the tone. Set the tone because your words are direction setters. And number three, uh, number two, I said, safeguard the promise. So after you set the tone, you must learn to safeguard the promise. Today, I want to talk about the last one that I want to use is what I call thoughts, your thoughts. The last T is the thoughts, the thoughts. Listen to me. There are some certain things that will make you a constant winner in life. And a failure to develop that mentality will expose you to a lifetime of struggle. Your thoughts, your thoughts. To, and, and this is the reason why I wanted to round this up and conclude. Because to triumph over the last four mitigating factors, which talks about the time, the tongue, temptation, and trials uh, that distort destiny and derail progress, you have got to change what you see. You've got to learn to change what you see. You have got to learn to what? change what you see and what you see comes from what you think is anyone hearing what i'm saying you got to learn to change what you what you see because sight is the ability to see things as they are vision is the ability to see things as they could be vision is an image of a desired future. It empowers you to carry on against difficult situations. So when we spent 33 days fasting, what we were developing was an insight called vision. 
Because I've said this before, the eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are rare. So one guy, two girls, one girl sees failure. One girl sees where he is right now. Another girl comes and sees potentials and future. And one girl believes in him both ways. I'm just using this inside because uh, now they will say, oh, when first time is right, okay, I can say anything. Uh, so, because uh, why, why did you use the girl? I, I don't care. You can come and preach. <laughs> and one girl sees the guy and says, we can walk on this. And another sees the guy's, mm-mm. And down the line, the same mm-mm became the mm-mm. <laughs> Both ways. Two guys see one girl. One guy sees potential. The other guy sees trouble. And along the line, you now find out that what you thought was a girlfriend was actually a potential, was a wife. It's eyes. And what the difference was that one guy was looking at the aesthetics. The other guy was seeing future. She does not actually fit the kind of person I go out with. How many of you have said that? You even don't fit. <laughs> because many times we go by looks. And the main, listen to me ladies and gentlemen, the main attack on you this year from the devil is to make you lose focus. Especially when things don't go the way you planned it. When he attacks your focus, he will make you lose your place. The only thing in the book of Numbers that we read that derailed the children of Israel was that they were looking at the wrong thing and they did not see what God told them to see. So they focused on the wrong thing, got distracted, and, 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 and the major reason was that they were looking instead of seeing. And many of us are looking instead of seeing. That's why Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 says, For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been ashamed or humiliated. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. So during the week, Deborah's thought clamped up. But she saw herself leading praise and worship. And everything about her body had to follow her dominant thought. He said, I would have despaired. I would have despaired. And if it was somebody else, oh, we call Deborah. Deborah calls Deborah and says to Deborah, something's wrong with my thought. This is maybe in on Thursday, I can't sing because you didn't see yourself singing. He says, I, Psalm 20, 27, he says, I would have despaired if had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Many of us give up on our relationships, our marriages, give, us up, give up on our jobs, give up on our stuff because we have not believed that we will see. Now, I want you to look at the difference between these things. There's a difference between let's see and I will see. Nah. Listen to me because though he didn't say I would have despaired had I not believed that uh, maybe we will see. He didn't say, let's see. He says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Pastor, what's the difference between let's see and I will see? You could see that 
through, through, through numbers. Where the, where the Israelites says, and in their eyes we looked like grasshoppers. Those who are on the let's see camp are those who say, let us see. Let us, the let us see will follow the trend of circumstances. Let me see if I can sing. Let me see how it goes on, on Friday. Let me see how I feel on Saturday. Let me see how I feel next month about this relationship. Let, 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 me, let me just see. I will give it one month or two months in this marriage. If nothing changes, then I'll make my decision. Those are the let's see. Let's see how I do in this job. Let's see if I can manage and pay off my debt. Let, let's see. Let's us see are based on maybe and not will be. Let us see would deny God based on the longevity of the promise, not the promise. Let's see got Israel to the entrance of the promised land. But what God says was relegated to let's see. So most of the promises and the prayers that you've put in the ground is based on let's see if it will rain. Let's see, let us see will allow the giants of the land to consume you. Let us see will stop us from fighting in the midst of the battle. Let us see denies you of the courage and stops believing that what God said it will come and light will come in the midst of the darkness. Let us see has no ingredients of faith and let us see always faints in the day of adversity. I don't know why I'm going into a relationship, but many people enter into a relationship, and we did a premarital over the last two weeks, and I was telling them, many people enter into a relationship with let us see. A few days ago, was it days ago or something like that, I went to see a wonderful, dear, dear loving friend of mine whose son passed away. Dear friend of mine, very tragic. And I walked into the house. Very tragic, 20 years of age. And if someone was sick, you would, but just sudden like that, just, it was, it was bad. And I got into the house and I, of course, many times get there and just shut up. Because sometimes what we Christians say is we annoy them. So I just sat there and I just, we just were talking about other things. It was on a Wednesday, I can remember. And I sat there, and then we were talking, and there were other ladies there. You cannot believe we had a service. She sent me a text. She says, thank you for the service that we had. Did I plan a service? No. We were just talking about relationships and all that kind of stuff. And one lady just said, you know, you're a pastor, right? I'm like, yeah. What do you think about somebody getting married but they need to secure themselves because they don't? I said, don't finish that word. I said, do you have a daughter? I said, yes. I said, don't even try. I said, but I, didn't, I haven't finished my question. I said, don't get there. And as you go back home, when you speak to your daughter, Tell her that the, anybody she goes out with and is about to marry, it will last forever. Because you are teaching her that as she goes into the relationship, let's see if it will work. She said, what's your name? And I mentioned her, and immediately all of them started Googling it. Oh, you have a job. Oh, my daughter. Oh, my son needs to come to your church. Oh, and it was, they, they were throwing different questions. And you know what I was pulling down and dismantling? The let us see ideology. Eh, but pastor, you know, in my experience, I said, shut up again. Because you are projecting fear 
upon your offsprings about what you, your mother, and your grandmother came through. And so you dictate the entire life of a new generation by what you have been through. It's the let us see generation. And the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. So if you enter into a relationship or into a job or into a business and say, let's see how it will go for six months. Your expectation says, I have refused to believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When we started worship, somebody said, let's see, let's see after six months. And immediately I said, okay, let's see. Until I said, no, 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 no. I will choose to believe, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So many of us need to move from let's see and we need to jump to I will see. Did you hear what I said? We should move from what? To what? Now say I move. From let's see to I will see. What are the I will see camp? The I will see will enforce the promise and divorce the problem. <laughs> I will see stems from God saying that there is light even in the midst of darkness. They don't deny the problem, they divorce the problem. Because they enforce the promise. The I will see camp will always outlive their troubles and not perish under them. So the I will see are the Caleb's and the Joshua's. The let us see are the camp of the children of Israel. And so the I will see even though they see giants in the land. What did he say? He says, let's rise up immediately. For I know we are able to conquer. The eye will see, says I may be flipping burgers in Burger King. But I see myself owning this establishment. Owning this franchise. The eye will see, says I'm a clerk right now. But do not look at me the way I am. For I am on my journey to greatness. The I will see says I can rent from you for one year. But in one and a half, two years, I will own my own property. The I will see will say I am paying you a mortgage. But Mr. Mortgage Bank, don't think that you will finish taking all your interest away from me. For in seven, eight, nine, ten years, I am going to wipe out this mortgage. It is I will see. The I will see will say, though my child is not performing well in education, I see greatness is upon this child. It may not be in the form of education, but I know that I know that I choose to believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see the centurion. He says, I know that you are able to heal. You do not need to be there to heal. I can see that you can heal. It's a difference between let us see and I will see. The woman with the issue of blood says, I see my healing. If I can just touch the hem of her garment, his garment. She didn't touch the hem of his garment and became healed. She saw that if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. You don't need to get there to dream it. Dream it and then you will get there. You don't need to. You don't need to. So pastor, the question is, how do I go from let's see to I will see? From doubt to faith, from uncertainty to certainty. How do I do that? I'm glad you didn't ask, but I will still tell you. Uh, 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 I will give you three things and then I need to go. And one of my daughters challenged me that I will not finish these three things today. So let's go. Number one, there needs to be what I call an amendment. Tap someone, say an amendment. Amen. What does the meaning of amendment mean? It means you've got to change your mind. The greatest achievement was at first, for a while, a dream. The oak sleeps in the acorn. <laughs> ah, come for, for the Good Friday service. You will find out that the oak was in darkness. 
The oak was in the floor. The oak was in the ground. It was in darkness before the dawn occurred. There was always a bird that was in the egg. There was always a dream in the seedlings of reality. You cannot travel within and stand without. You, listen to me. Before, you, before I get to that camera, I have already traveled within myself to that camera. I didn't say, I didn't say, oh, let me get to the camera. Okay, now I see. No, 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 no. From where I was, as I was preaching, I just saw, what can I say? And then I saw myself saying this. So I have saw myself within myself saying to that cameraman, I'm coming to you. And because I said it, everything within me starts to gravitate towards that camera. Are you following what I'm saying? So until the prodigal son came to himself, he was still eating with pigs. But he saw himself going back to his father's house and everything within him and his feet, his legs, his extremities and his faculty started to move into the place and the direction of his dominant thought. He had to make an amendment. He had to change his mind. If you don't make an amendment, nothing is going to change. Vision is the invisible picture within a person that defines his future. Your dominant vision will determine your eventual outcome. We are not talking about mere wishful thinking here or another armchair daydreaming that people indulge in. Seeing is by faith. You must learn to think big in small places. Your tomorrow will not listen to you except your today dictates your tomorrow. You've got to learn to think big in small places. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all we what? Ask for what? Now let's stop there because we quickly read that. And according to what? The power that what? Worketh within us. Now hold that because God is not able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we do not think or ask. So for God to first walk, there must be a level of thinking that you have in place. And then when you have it in place, the Bible says it is according to the power, not that is with him, but that is in us. So I will succeed in my marriage if I think that I will succeed, then God will make it exceedingly abundantly, meaning that even my children, children will not divorce. Because when I think that we will succeed in marriage, every power that God has placed on the inside of me will start to walk above what I think. But many of us are calling God on a thinking that is mediocre. On a thinking that is below power. On a thinking that doesn't even exist. And also, if you think negatively, God will do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask and as you think. Because the Bible says in the book of Numbers, chapter 14, it says, as you spoke in my ear, so I will do. If you think you will get out of debt, God will do exceedingly abundantly. If you are owing money and you say to yourself, I am out of debt. Is that me? Yeah. Say, say I'm, uh, I am out of debt. You will find out that something on the inside of you will push you towards those that can help you, will push you to your budget, will push you to maintainers, will push you to deny those who may want to stand in your way or the distraction that will take off your focus. It is whatever is on the inside that God is able to do exceedingly abund abundantly. So turn to someone and say, conquer your self-defeating thoughts. Thoughts are so powerful that they either make you or break, through, break you. But they will never leave you neutral. Thoughts are so powerful that they can either what make you or break you. But they will never leave you neutral. Thoughts are so powerful that they what either will make you or break you. But you're never going to be in a neutral gear. You're either going to go forward or you're going to go backwards. So the first thing God wants us to do to move from let's see 
to I will see is you have to make an amendment because nobody thinks impossibility thoughts and yet experience possibilities. No one thinks obstacles and receives miracle. Fainting in the mind leads to staggering in the legs. The woman of, with the issue of blood, as I said, is so possibilities. She imagined her healing before she was healed. So you will never make progress with your legs if your mind is stagnant. Think like a winner. Turn into a winner and grow to win. Think like a winner. Turn into a winner and grow to win. Because the devil always likes to paint the, a picture of gloom and doom in people's mind. Pictures of no hope. Pictures of no change or even death. And there are people carrying a portrait of the future that was wrongly painted. And it is limiting their progress in life. Turn to someone and say amendment. The second thing is what I call adjustment. Ha <laughs> ha. So the first thing in, uh, in amendment is change your mind. The second thing in adjustment is change what you see. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 to 15. It says the Lord said to Abraham after the Lord had left. Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. Where you are standing. He didn't say go there first. He says you got to look. He says look to the north, look to the south, look to the east and look to the west. Verse 15. He says for all the land which you see. Verse 15. For all the land which you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever exceedingly abundantly. He didn't say you will get to the land first. He says no. If you lift your head. After Lot has gone, after a disappointment, after the guy that you raised, after the guy that you thought would be with you forever, after the guy that has, that has ghosted you. Well, when he has left or she has left, God says, lift up your eyes to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west and call him or her to you. Not the one that ghosted you. But the one that he wants to be your perfection. He said to, he said, he said to Abraham, he said, listen to me. The, the, the first thing is there needs to now be an adjustment. Because he has left, you need to adjust. And many of us don't adjust when we go through a disappointment. Many of us don't know how to adjust when we get to the land and say, wow, there are giants in the land. Many of us don't know how to adjust when we get to the place where we see the property, want to buy the property, and then they say something is wrong, and we do not know how to judge. Oh, well, if it's not God's will, then that's it. When we wanted to buy a property, when we're currently living, I said it before, they, 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 I was negotiating for 5,000 pounds. A difference. Said this, I said this. Says this, this, this. Said, well, we cannot take that. So I left the place, and I said, God! If it is you, they will knock off 5,000 pounds. So I took my friend to the place to go and look at it. And he looked at it. And when we left, he says, what's the problem? I said, I've put a stake in the ground. That if they knock off 5,000 pounds, then it's mine. My guy just took out his phone. 12 times 25. 5,000 divided by 12 times 25. He says, five pounds or two pounds per month. <laughs> he just did. And he just walked away. Back inside to the guy, I said, deal. He said, so, so God is debating on two pounds a month. You can't be serious. He says, if it is God, Ask him for 5,000 pounds. You know what I didn't do? I didn't adjust. I didn't adjust. Like, okay, so there's a problem. What do you do? Because did you see yourself in that property? 
As we were going, he said, what did you do? I said, I went to shake his hand. I said, yeah, because as I walked in with you, my wife was there. He says, I could see you guys in there. I could see your children in there. I could see you playing in the, in, in, in the, in the, in, in the garden. And many of us, because something didn't work out, 5,000 pounds, we can't adjust. They've gone. Let them go. They ghosted you, ghost them back. They left you, it was because they were never supposed to be with you. And they left you because their season and their time with you has finished. Not that they're evil, but their time has finished. And the more Lot stays with Abraham, he will take even Abraham to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Many of us are attached to things that will destroy us. Why? Because we can't see. All our eyes and our sight has been through the people we are with. So our value is actually known by what we have. And sometimes our value is known by what we see. Because many of the things we buy and we wear, we can't afford them. But because people say it's nice, we receive value from there. Because we can't see that even in a torn jeans, I can be successful. Sorry for those who are, you know I wear it or not. Every man is a product of their visual capability. It is your spiritual eyes that will give you the ability to recreate your world. Men of vision see opportunity in the midst of difficulty. The most difficult people to discourage are those who have found a future and focus on it. Those easily discouraged are people who don't see anything in their tomorrow. You only become a commander of what you are capable of seeing. It's an adjustment. I need to adjust what I'm seeing. What I can see will deprive me. Can you see yourself out of debt? Can you see yourself married? Can you see yourself in your business? Can you see yourself in your dream house? For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Jacob found that the flock produced according to what was placed before them. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 37 to 39. They produced, the flock produced what they saw. So listen to what happened. Jacob had to do an adjustment. How? Ten times Laban changed his wages. Ten times. They've only changed yours once at work. Ten times they changed his wages. And then they now gave him a Leah instead of a Rachel. So, the swindler was also swindled. Ten times. And it looked like his life has been paralyzed by number one, 14 years of serving Laban for his wife. Seven years the first time. That man is a bad man. Laban, Laban, Laban. Seven years. And then he says, oh, for the one that you really want, you're going to serve another side. So for 14 years, 14 years, 14 years, you've been in that relationship for, four, God forbid. If you hit seven, that is trouble with me. Three, you are in problems. One, you're married. 14 years. And they changed his wages what? Ten times. Most of us will sit there by the rivers of Babylon, <laughs> there where we went. Many of us will start crying. Girl, why are you not out? He, I thought he was the one. Ah. Is there no adjustment? Instead of Jacob crying, what did the Bible say? He adjusted himself. And God showed him in a vision. The, the first thing he said is he had to adjust, he had to make an adjustment in what he was seeing. He had to say to himself, hang on, I can't stay here forever. He, he had to say to himself, wow, when shall I provide for my own house? Thinking. Then God came and did exceedingly, abundantly, above what he think, thought and asked. And then God said to him, you know what? Let me bless you in a dream. And in the dream, he saw that, the, that the, 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 the cattle that were brown, that were exceptional, the ones that were not common, were actually breeding 
more than the normal ones. So he now went down to Laban and he said, let's have a deal. You, any cattle that produces in this color is yours. Laban says, bam, that's good. Anyone that is speckled. How many people have seen speckled cattle before? No, because you only see it in a vision. He says, ah, man. Guy said, mm, I've changed your wave, w- wages the 11th time. He didn't know there's a God of the 11th hour. Mm. And so when they now did that deal, you saw what happened. The Bible says that Jacob started to prosper. And not, God will do exceedingly abundantly above what you think. Not Laban that was jealous. The Bible says his sons were jealous of him. Don't sit there weeping. See it. Number three, I call it alignment. Change your position. So the first thing was what? If you remember, if you don't, I'm not going to preach in this church. Thank you. Second one was what? The third one was what? It means change your position. The first thing was change your thinking. Second thing is change your seeing. Third thing is change your positioning. John eleven forty says, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, alignment is when the timing of God and the promises of God interact. Bring alignment. Being, sorry, being in alignment is about God putting you in touch with the right people or things to advance you. That's why it is his year of perfection. When I am in alignment with God, my position will change. The alignment of a padlock with its right sync sequence and combination is what will open the door to sw- a sweatless life. You can be at the place where there is a combination. And you can be pressing the combination and pulling it. And nothing will change. And somebody else will come and do pa 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 and bam, you're there. Why? Because when you are in alignment and those numbers and sequence, they align, you become a winner. You know these suitcases where you, took, you used to travel, you know, and you, you put there. There was one day we, we took it to travel. I forgot what the number is. And my wife just quickly pressed it, says this. I said, I don't know the number. And then we started. All the numbers in the world, we applied to it. It didn't happen. And in the midst of that, we were saying, Holy Spirit, bring to our remembrance. And as we tried and tried and tried, we just, one obscure number came in. And we just pressed it and bam. It came up without sweat. But we had wasted nearly up to an hour trying to find the... In fact, I was at the point of putting a knife to the thing and destroy it just because of a number. And many of us are destroying our lives because we're not in alignment. Winners align with truth and not facts. A man is never finished When he is defeated, he is finished when he quits. Align with the truth and say you have been designed to win. Romans 8.37 says, in all these things, we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. So let me go back to the beginning of my sermon. Put that scripture on. He says, what, what? What? Did you see that? What? In the beginning, he says, what? What would have become of me had I not aligned myself to believe that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? So when temptation comes, when trial comes, when there's a time lag, when the negativity comes that wants to change your tongue, stay in a place where your thoughts and your life is aligned with the truth for you will know the truth and the truth will set you free did i say it is easy no i didn't when everything else is negative but if there is an adjustment if there is an amendment if i align myself with the truth 
I will become more than a conqueror. He says, I am more than a conqueror. Not that difficulty was not around, but he says, I align myself with the truth that I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Go back into that house. No matter what it is, you are more than a conqueror. No matter what it is that you have only one shoe, you are more than a conqueror. No matter what it is that you have one clothes, you are more than a conqueror. No matter what it is that you were able to get ready quickly because there was not much to choose from, you are more than a conqueror. I have been there before in my life where it was not a point of me. I never got late to church. Why? I never had a headache. What do I wear? Why? Because there's only one, two dresses, one cream jacket and everything else must flow with it. There was, there was no point in there. But I knew one one day that I'll be more than a conqueror. The, 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 the only thing that would make me late was, would be my car. And so when I get into my car, I will be speaking in tongues from the door all the way to the car. As I get to the car and put my key in the car, I'm saying, walk, walk. And then I'll push it. it will, do, 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 do. No, you're going to walk. Do, 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 do. I am more than a conqueror. Do, 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 do. And then it will come on. Bam! I say, thank you, Jesus. And then when I go to church, I'll make sure that I pack it on the slope. Because if it doesn't work, I'm able... But I am still more than a conqueror through him who loves us. Did you get anything from me today? Amen we'll and amen. Keep on amen. Shut it down and put the lights up.